Okay, so this O'Reilly book is on GitHub. Uh, you can search for this name. This was published in 2004, Linux IP Tables Pocket Reference, and Gregor and Purdy. The introduction says firewalls, network address translation, and network logging and accounting are all provided by Linux's net filter system, also known by the name of the command used to administer it. IP tables. The IP tables interface is the most sophisticated ever offered on Linux and makes Linux an extremely flexible system for any kind of network filtering you might do. Large sets of filtering rules can be grouped in ways that make it easy to test them and turn them on and off. Do you watch for all types of ICMP traffic? Some of them are quite dangerous. Can you take advantage of stateful filtering to simplify the management of TCP connections? Would you like to track how much traffic of various types you get? This pocket reference will help you at those critical moments when someone asks you to open or close a port in a hurry, either to enable some important traffic or to block an attack. Linux IP tables pocket reference will keep the subtle syntax straight and help you remember all the values you have to enter in order to be as secure as possible. And the listings of all op options are divided into those suitable for firewalling, accounting, and NAT. So let's see, where does this go from here? Okay, I had to click the more pages icon. So the kernel's network packet processing si subsystem. This is called NetFilter. And IP tables is the command used to configure it. Okay, so IP tables 1.2.7a uses NetFilter framework in the Linux kernel version 2.4 and also covers most of what's in 2.6. Because NetFilter and IP tables are tightly coupled, I'll use IP tables to refer to either or both of them throughout this book. The IP tables architecture groups network packet processing rules into tables by function. So we have packet filtering network address translation, and other packet mangling, each which have chains, so these are sequences, of processing rules. Rules consist of matches, used to determine which packets the rule will apply to, and targets, that determine what will be done with the matching packets. Be mindful, IP tables operates at OSI layer 3, the network layer, for OSI layer 2 link, there are other technologies such as EB tables, Ethernet bridge tables, and they give us a link to SourceForge for more information. So here's an example command. IP tables tac T NAT tac capital A pre-routing tac I ETH1 interface tac P TCP type of protocol, right? Tac tac D port, that's a destination port, and then J for DNAT. Don't know what that J could stand for this destination net, um, and here's our actual destination IP. Even though they put a port number 8080 here, I wonder why those two are different. Here's our explanation. They'll decompose it um, with the component in a description. So TNAT operate on the NAT table by appending the following rule to its pre-routing chain, match packets coming in on the ETH1 interface that use, okay, so they're coming in on this interface intended for local port 80, then jump to the DNAT target, and then change the destination address to this with a destination port of 80. Oh, that's the NAT part, right? Okay, that makes sense. So IP tables defines five hook points in the kernel's packet processing pathways. We have pre-routing, input forward, post-routing, and output. Built-in chains are a attached to these hook points. You can add a sequence of rules for each hook point. Each rule represents an opportunity to affect or monitor packet flow. Tip. It is common to refer to the pre-routing chain of the NAT table, which implies that chains belong to tables. However, chains and tables are only partially correlated, and neither really belongs to the other. Chains represent hook points in the packet flow, and tables represent the types of processing that can occur. Figures 1 through 3 show all the legal combinations and the order in which they are encountered by packets flowing through the system. Figure 1 shows how the packets traverse the system for network address translation. These are chains for the NAT table. Figure 1, network packet flow, and hook points for NAT. So network interface pre-routing, 
goes to local process, goes to post routing, which will have a network interface, and a local process is feeding output to both of these. Figure 2 shows how packets traverse the system for packet filtering. These are the chains for the filter table. So coming in, input will go to a local process, and if there's a forward, it's going right back out, and there's a process that can have output go either to the back into the input, which will go back into a local process, or it'll go out. Okay, and that was the filter table. Figure 1 shows how packets traverse the system for network address translation. Okay, pre-routing, post-routing is a network address translation concept. Thus, NAT table. So we got our NAT table, our filter table. Here's a mangle one. How packets traverse the system for packet mangling. So a packet comes in to pre-routing, can go into input for a local process, or straight down to forward to post-routing. So is Mangle just a mangling of these two? A combining, essentially, of those two? Maybe it should be called mushing. Mushing together those two. So table two shows the five hook points and describes the points in the packet flow where you can specify processing. So hook being forward input output post-routing or pre-routing. So in forward, that flow... I should read up here, forward allows you to process packets that flow through a gateway computer, coming in one interface and going right back out another. Input allows you to process packets just before they are delivered to a process. Output allows you to process packets just after they are generated by a local process. And then the post-routing hook allows you to process packets just before it leaves a network interface. Obviously, pre-routing would be just before it enters. Okay, that's not possible. So, just as it arrives from entering a network interface, they note that it's after dropping any packets resulting from the interface being in promiscuous mode, and after checksum validation. So let's go down to the tip. For the curious, the hook points are defined in the kernel's header file. User include Linux netfilter.h, okay, with names like nfip forward. So NF for net filter. So we got filter, the in and out hooks, and the pre and post routing hooks. Your choice of chain will be based on where in the packet lifecycle you need to apply your rules. For example, if you want to filter outgoing packets, it is best to do so in the output chain because the post routing chain is not associated with the filter table. I wish I gave an example right after that. Tables, IP tables comes with three built-in tables, filter, mango, and NAT. Each is pre-configured with chains corresponding to one or more of the hook points described in table two and shown in figures one through three. The three built-in tables are described in table three here. Let me pause here so the video doesn't go on too long and I'll pick it up in the next one right here where we're leaving off.